It's wild. And these Latinos, they love making babies, too. Just know that. They do. They do. There's no pulling out. They don't do that. They come inside, just like they did to our country. <laughs> Republicans are the party with the good sense of humor. Free speech is under attack, people. I host a show, and each week I get updates what words we're allowed to use and not use anymore. It's happening right now the past few years. It's a real thing. Action. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true. Words hurt like hell. But when words hurt, what are you supposed to do? Tony Hinchcliffe made some jokes, and now everybody is outraged. And now for everybody who's outraged, I want to know, what you going to do about it? You're going to scream, oh, my God, oh, my God, I can't believe he said that. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. Okay. We're getting there. What do you say? He said that, that Puerto Rico was a floating pile of trash. Hey, dear Puerto Ricans, if you're not trash, are you offended? Man, they make jokes about me all the time. I mean, have you ever watched the Tony Hinchcliffe Kill Tony show? If you've never watched it, you don't get it, okay? And I'm not trying to defend no white man. And if you think that race doesn't matter in America, you're a liar. And that's probably the biggest problem in America right now is everybody's lying. Won't nobody tell the truth. And then when you hear the truth, you get outraged. Oh, my gosh, you can't say that. We, you've got to be respectful. You can't say these things. I grew up in the 80s, 90s, all right? When people said the most awful, horrific things, I grew up in the age of your mama jokes. Your mama so fat. Your mama so stupid. Your mama so dumb. Nine times out of ten, those your mama jokes was honest, and that's why you got mad. Because your mama came to school, and she had on a bonnet, and she had on a moo moo, and she was fat like a moo moo. And so when somebody said, man, your mama fat as a cow, boy, you ready to rock and roll. But that's the thing. If you're not willing to defend your speech, then all of a sudden you ain't got no free speech. You do get bullied. And I'm trying to tell you, man, you better not get bullied. You got to defend yourself now. Free speech is under attack in America. Yeah, it's a cool black guy with a thing on his head. What the hell is that, a lampshade? Look at this guy. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I'm just kidding, that's one of my buddies. He had a Halloween party last night. We had fun, we carved watermelons together. It was awesome. When Tony Hinchcliffe can't make a watermelon joke, you know, you know about watermelon? I'm black, I love watermelon. Hey man, I'm black, I love me some chicken. If you tell me, they say, do you love some Tiggo Bitties? I'm gonna say, hell yeah, I love me some Tiggo Bitties. Do you love you some biscuits? I'm like, hell yeah, I love me some biscuits. Give me some biscuits and Tiggo Bitties and put them all around me. I love that. I'm not gonna be offended by something that's true. I'm not gonna be offended about things that I actually like. That's crazy as hell. I don't give a shit if it's a stereotype. I don't care how many jokes about watermelon that white people make. I'm still going to, I'm going to enjoy that delicious red fruit because I love it. I love me some watermelon. I love me some titties. I love me some coochie. Need some, give me some, want some, give me some more. And now if you watch my channel, I tell jokes all the time. Sometimes my jokes don't land. And if my jokes don't land, hell, I'm still going to laugh. That's the whole thing about jokes. If a person doesn't laugh, then it's not funny. But I still try. Now if a person does laugh, then oh shit, it's okay then. When you watch the Kill Tony show, he makes fun of everybody. It gets kind of uncomfortable because he says a lot of things that's based on race. Now, just because I make a joke that's based on race, does that mean that I'm racist? Or do I think that it's funny to make fun of stereotypes? Because not all stereotypes are true. They're just in general. They're generalized things. They're generalized statements. You add a punchline to a generalized statement, then all of a sudden, it either lands and it's funny, or I get offended and it's not funny. And if you're a good comedian, then you try again, you, re you rework it, and then when you tell the joke, I'm going to laugh. What are we doing? Why is our money involved in these wars? <laughs> when it comes to Israel and Palestine, we're all thinking the same thing. Settle your stuff already. Best out of three. Rock, paper, scissors. You know the Palestinians are going to throw rock every time. But you also know the Jews have a hard time throwing that paper. You know what I'm saying? I've watched black comedians my whole life. And black comedians 
white people are always they punching back they just beat up on white people and especially white men they can't say nothing now when a white man tells a similar type of joke then all of a sudden we got this racial divide in america now in america we got to understand numbers cat williams said that this is going to be the year of honesty and so we got to tell the truth we got to expose it even if we don't like it right uh, big dick deviance is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. And so as a black man, I know that there's more white men in America than me. And so if I say something to white men, if they want to retaliate with physical force, then I got to deal with that. That's the reality of being a man. And most people in America right now, you don't want to deal with the reality of physical force. You think that you can just say whatever you want and get away with it. How did we get the First Amendment anyway? How did Americans get freedom of speech put into the Constitution? I'll tell you how. Men had to die. <laughs> oh, hey, I know, it's, I know it feels real uncomfortable. We had to fight wars to defend the fact that we can say whatever we want to say. And right now in 2024, going into 2025 until forever, if you're not willing to lay down your life to defend the thing that you think is valuable, then it's not valuable for every man in America. I'm talking directly to you because men, if free speech is under attack, then you're under attack because me saying things don't do nothing. The whole history of the world is built on physical force. Men making the decision to say, I'm going to say what I want to say. I'm going to do what I want to do. And the response for the rest of the world is you come stop me. And now if someone says, I don't like that. And if someone says, I don't like that. And them saying that statement stops me from doing what I think is my duty in life. Then that's on me. I'm a coward. I'm a punk. I'm a bitch. And I'm telling men in America, stop being cowards. Stop being punks. Stop being bitches. America don't respect you. Your woman don't respect you. You can't laugh at jokes. You can't defend your family. You will not stand up to this government. You won't stand up to Joe Biden. Joe Biden took that joke and he said that 50% of America was garbage. And just the other day, a speaker at his rally called Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage. Well, let me tell you something. I don't, I, I don't know the Puerto Rican that, that I know or Puerto Rico where I'm in my home state of Delaware. They're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. His, his, his demonization of seen as unconscionable, and it's un-American. He said people who voted for Donald Trump were garbage. Now, I voted for Donald Trump. Do you think that offends me? Hell no. I love my life. I love my family. I don't believe that I'm garbage. I believe that Joe Biden's policies have been garbage. I think that the Joe Biden administration has been garbage. I think the attacks on Donald Trump and the attacks on Tony Hinchcliffe I think all that shit is garbage. I think the attack on free speech is garbage. And anyone who says that I can't say what I want to say, I think you're garbage. And if you don't like what I'm saying, I think you have the right to come and do something. I'm going to tell you about me as a, as a child, right? My upbringing, when I was like 10 years old, I played Little League Baseball. And there was a boy. He was walking with my brother. They both bigger than me. My brother's like three years older than me. And so this boy is like three or four years older than me. I'm probably 10. And so this boy, he's saying the most ugliest, nastiest, vile things to me, and I don't like it. And so I tell this boy, I say, man, you better not say that to me no more. And he said, or what? Or what? Now, I'm just a little fellow. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do? What am I going to do to stop this big boy from talking nasty to me? And then when I, when I said something, all of a sudden, it, it started the physical force. And now we was leaving baseball practice. And he had on baseball cleats. You ever seen baseball cleats? They got them spikes on the bottom. These were hard plastic spikes. And he started kicking me in my butt, kicking me in my butt over and over again. And so, you know what I did? I turned around and got dead in that nigga's ass. I beat this shit out that mother. I beat his ass. And my brother from that day forward, he said, man, my little brother got hands. Now, this is how I grew up. And now, most men in America, y'all are afraid of physical force. I ain't no goddamn UFC fighter. Hell no, I don't have my ass whooped before. I don't thought a UFC fighter before. That nigga choked me out. I said, oh shit, nigga, let me go. Let me go. Stop choking me, motherfucker. <laughs> and then after he choked me out, I had to go learn how to slip that so that I didn't get choked out again. I got my rematch. I got my get back. Now, the point being is, even as a young boy, I understood that being a man is an ideology. You have to believe in it. Even if the nigga is bigger than me, I got to fight. 
If the nigga is stronger than me, I got to fight. It doesn't matter if it's 10 of them, I got to fight. And I think that's the ethos in America that most men is lacking. That's why I said punks, bitches, pussies, whatever, y'all, coochie. And I know that YouTube might censor me, but me conforming my speech to YouTube is me acting like, you know what I'm saying? And I think that we're supposed to fight back against our actual politicians. We're supposed to fight back against these digital social media companies. We're supposed to fight back against all these advertisers who say that if you're not saying something that makes me money, then you can't say it. Well, what I believe is if you're not saying something that adds value or contributes to freedom or pushes freedom forward, this includes jokes, this includes theories, this includes challenging the Bible and whatever other authority exists. I want to find out what's true. I don't want to deal with the status quo. I don't want to continue on with tradition, even though tradition has value. I want to test tradition and make sure that those traditions have value. I want to do a stress test on the American ideology. I want to do a stress test on your belief system so I know where is America headed. And if we can't handle words, America's headed to a very terrible place. It's time that we have better conversations. And if, and if you don't like the conversations that we're having, you need to do something. Because I'm going to keep talking until someone stops me. And I believe that every man in America, you better keep talking until someone stops you. And then when we come together, it's going to be 10 million men strong to say, ain't nobody in America, can't nobody in the world stop this freedom because you're the greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.